Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Ryan and Lisa here today to discuss um, mental health, brain health. Mm -hmm. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we just felt it was appropriate to kind of pull it all together um, and let you know how supplements can play a big role um, with your brain health. So I'm going to start giving you some statistics, okay? Dementia is the seventh biggest killer globally, which is pretty scary. More than 6 million Americans of all ages have Alzheimer's. One in nine, age 65 and older, have Alzheimer's. And it is believed, this is crazy to me, it is believed that the number of people worldwide who will be diagnosed with dementia is expected to more than double from 57.4 million in 2019 to 152.8 million in 2050. That's got to be because of risk factors. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy. We'll very, very, talk about here soon. We that's, will. that's nuts. Yeah. Cognitive decline begins early to mid 40s. So a lot of times we think of this happening like all later in life. It is an age related disease, but it's getting earlier and earlier. So it all starts to decline in, in our mid, early to mid 40s. Um, and I know Ryan has a few things he wants to break down about brain health. Does that mean now? Yeah. Oh, my turn. Okay, sweet. All right. Uh, well, today's discussion, we're probably going to, we're trying to break it out. We'll, we'll focus on really about cognition and maintaining your mental faculties as we age. Because mood, say, the other aspect of mental health is probably more like mood disorders, panic attacks, and general anxiety disorders. Um, we will talk about that in another call, but we're not going to get into that really in depth today. Although much of what we talk about really realistically will help benefit and, and really, you know, be there to say prevent for both. Um, but really, I wanted to kind of identify some of the risk factors associated with like Lisa just said, some of those neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and she just hit on, it's crazy that the numbers are, are gonna it projected to go up that high. Now there's obviously no, 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 new, no known cure uh, or really that great of treatment for any of these things. So we're gonna talk a lot about lifestyle today and different things and different you know, modalities and things that we can do on our own to help reduce the risk um, because that's, that's absolutely possible. All right, so um, what did we say we're gonna, what did I say I was gonna the do? The correlation. Right? Oh, the correlation, yeah, of course, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there's really three main risk factors and, you know, in, in disease states that are really heavily tied to neuro, neurodegenerative diseases. And that is uh, dyslipidemia, which is uh, cholesterol, high cholesterol, uh, hypertension, so heart disease, um, and of course, diabetes. The diabetes is the one that scares me the most because the numbers are going up and up and up. And a lot of it has to do with obesity, of course, and our dietary habits. Um, but they're calling, they're referring to some of the, the Alzheimer's and dementia specifically as like a diabetes type three. Now, there's some controversy on what that, why that is. There's a strong correlation between the two. Um, the incidence is, pretty, is, is significant. But they're, they're saying, too, that potentially the insulin, uh, the neurons is not able to actually properly use insulin within the brain. But there's also controversy whether or not insulin can even be uh, across the blood-brain barrier and get in there. So there's a lot from a clinical perspective. We're still trying to figure all of that out. But it's still pretty clear that there's a strong correlation between the two. But Lisa and I love viewing things through the um, root cause lens. And so identifying things like, you know, healthy living habits, reasons why people are getting into this disease in the first place, and how to reduce your risk. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about now. Um, there are a bunch of other risk factors. Lisa, you, read, you mentioned age, uh, as we said, lifestyle, genetics. Genetics is an interesting one. We won't talk much about it. By the way, we are not neurologists. We're not geneticists. We don't, we don't specialize in brain health. Um, but what we are doing is sharing a lot of the information that we've seen in practice in a clinical setting, as well as things that we read, uh, literature that we've, um, you know, things and, and our own conclusions. So these are a lot of the, a lot of this is just our own opinion and just sharing with you guys because it's a scary disease. And for you guys that have a loved one or if you yourself or have been diagnosed or getting close to that and having signs of dementia, it's scary because it's not really so much just the patient too. It's the caregiving um situation there too. It's, very, it's a huge, huge, huge burden on family, friends, caregivers. And so for all those caregivers out there, my heart goes out to you. I know it's a difficult one to deal with. 
So Lisa, go ahead and run your yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, I'm sure you guys too know of somebody, whether a close friend or family going through it and how taxing it is on everybody around yeah. them. I know myself, my aunt, scary. and I also have a client of mine who's husband, so I hear about it every day. And it's very scary, um, very sad. But like Ryan said, there is no cure for this, guys. Uh, the the pharmacological, pharmacological. Uh, pharmacological treatments are pretty unsuccessful as well, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So what do we have to do? We have to focus on prevention. And you hear me talk about this a lot. Um, you know, preventative medicine versus reactive medicine. This is one area where you must focus on preventative medicine and it must start at a young age. It's not something of like waiting until we're in our sixties to start taking care of our, our brain and our health. So some lifestyle factors, I'm just going to talk about like the major ones, um, sleep. Oh. Super, super, super mm -hmm. important. Like you've got to give your body like those seven to nine hours of, you want it to be pretty consistent um, sleep habits of the seven to nine hours around the same amount of time, if you can. I know jobs, certain lifestyle factors, certain, you know, life things can, can prevent that from happening. But when you sleep, like this is when your, your brain protects itself from mm -hmm. toxic um, proteins. And these are the ones um, that form Alzheimer's mm -hmm. causing you know, plaque, specifically plaque in the brain. Yeah. yeah. So, so sleep is super important for that. Not to, just to mention guys, like how your brain functions better when you sleep. I mean, that's like, that's the given, you know, when you've had a good night's sleep, like you're on point, you're, you're ready for the day. You could tackle your job better, your life, your family, whatever it is. Um, so sleep is huge um, for that. And there's a known, well-known neurologist that said it's the REM specifically that she's watching. And there's, there's now actual proof that shows that yes, poor REM sleep is definitely tied to neurodegenerative disease. So maybe a sleep tracker for, yeah. for those of you out there. I was just going to say that. I mean, we both use the, the aura ring um, and, and it breaks it up. And then you can, you can find out ways that you can help increase uh, certain parts of your sleep cycle if something is, is um, you know, lacking a little bit. Oh. Uh, sleep will be a whole another different whole podcast another yeah. <laughs> or um, Zoom. Um, okay. And then also a sedentary lifestyle. Okay, we've got to exercise. Um, the the way our society has, unfortunately, our current way of life has resulted in a lack of exercise. Um, you know, just being more sedentary. So we've got to make sure we're exercising. This also leads to an increase in obesity. Same thing with overconsumption of food. So we can put those two together. So your lack of exercise and your overconsumption of food leading to obesity. And obesity, I mean, it just kind of the whole thing kind of goes together. Obesity can lead to um, uh, type diabetes. 2 diabetes yep. and then that could lead to dementia I mean these are all like you know causal things um and it uh, obesity is linked to just quicker cognitive decline so um, just so you know the relative risk this has the strongest benefit is exercise as of now but you can't out, out, out exercise poor sleep like you said you cannot exercise sure. a poor diet yeah like you, know, you can't say I'm gonna get five hours of sleep so I can get up and exercise because you, you're hurting right. yourself there you, you've got to do these things yeah. the exercise by far is the most impactful risk reduction strategy you can deploy yep get those heart rates up guys yep. get your body moving um and then I said food okay overconsumption of food we're just eating too much but also um, even if we're not eating too much it's the ultra processed foods that we're eating think of everything that comes in a package. That's, that is a majority of that stuff is ultra processed food. Um, that stuff leads to major inflammation. Um, we can start feeling depressed, anxious. There's an increased risk of cognitive decline. So you've got to eat your whole foods. You've got to eat your fruits, your vegetables, your lean meats, your fish, your, your healthy fats. I mean, you've got to eat from whole food sources. Stop opening up boxes. No more frozen dinners. No more... No more of those big box of crackers, chips. I mean, you, you've got to pick the whole food stuff. Um, and then another one too is just, I mean, the gut health, okay? We know, I'm sure you've heard um, the, the gut brain connection or the gut is your second brain. You know, certain things, the buzzword is kind of going around, but there is a major connection between your gut health and your brain. Um, gut health is huge. Um, I pretty passionate about gut health. So that's a whole nother topic as well, but just remember it's super important to take care of your gut. And then this leads to like another thing that we can do prevention is right here. We have our supplements for brain health, okay? Yeah. Ryan's gonna dig into those for us a little bit. Yeah, so supplements is obviously Lisa likes to say it's supplement to a healthy diet, which she just focused. She makes sure that that's pretty clear that we're talking about eating well-balanced foods, avoiding, you know, inflammatory foods, preserving the gut function. You know, you've heard of people 
maybe not heard of it. It's called leaky gut syndrome. It's not really acknowledged in the medical community as a, di as a, as a diagnosis, but nonetheless, it's, it's still some one, one of the contributing factors to our, uh, say, leaky gut. All right, so from a supplement perspective, uh, we really focus on saying, well, look, we know there's no like one known supplement or one thing that will help by itself and, and that's it. So that's weird, hold on, the phone's acting funny a little bit. I guess we're good just to keep going, right? Seems like, yep, yeah, I think we're going. fine to keep going. So the, um, the way we looked at it was just looking at it from a foundational health perspective. And so we said, look, let's go at it with the essential nutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, that the body needs at a minimum, so essential things that the body needs uh, that does not make on its own, and go from there and help people understand and bring awareness around those, those, those vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. So we said, all right, let's start. Of course, we know B vitamins uh, have a lot to do with memory and cognition. So in your, in your daily essentials pack, which is the, the multivitamin, the magnesium, and the D, you have a men's and a women's multivitamin. So there's the, uh, the, the B vitamins are really the focus of this. Uh, they are methyl in methylated form, which means they're more bioavailable. They're the superior form of B vitamin, um, B6, B9, B12, uh, all in this multivitamin. And then, I was right to say that any deficiency in those three B vitamins, B6, B12, and B9, which is most people known as folate, may increase the risk of memory loss and other forms of cognitive decline. Oh, sure. Any deficiency. Oh, yeah, sure. Any. You've got to take them. Yeah, no, deficiency, deficiency in B vitamin is a big problem for sure. All right, so, and then of course, magnesium. Magnesium being the most magnificent mineral on the planet, but uh, it's involved in over 300 biochemical reactions. And much of those are obviously in cellular health. They are, it's involved in cognition. It's involved in neuronal health. So the neurons in the brain, the cells, um, magnesium, it's dependent upon magnesium for normal cellular function. So, um, and there's been a study, at least you have the results of the study, but there's a study that has shown that uh, increasing the amount of magnesium at from an early age it does what? It extends your longevity or it, it, it lengthens your, your, what was it? It safeguards against your safeguards. neurodegenerative diseases and cognitive, cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. The younger, the better. Yeah, the younger, the get better. Your magnesium. Yeah, right, exactly. And the type of magnesium matters because you need a magnesium that will absorb and that can obviously increase magnesium levels in your brain, your body, your, your tissues, your muscles, your nerves. Um, and that's why this is this is so good because there's two two forms of magnesium: magnesium glycinate, magnesium gluconate, which are both two very superior forms of magnesium. All right, and then uh, the D3, which is the, you know neuroprotective. Vitamin D3, we know that starts as a vitamin but gets quickly converted into a hormone. We've known it as a bone support uh, vitamin hormone, but really it actually has been involved now in mood and cognition. It's neuroprotective, so helps protect your neurons. Um, and we paired it with K2. So each one of these soft gels or capsules, I apologize, is 2,000 units of vitamin D. So that should be about the right dose to maintain a healthy blood level of vitamin D. Right. And these three, as Ryan said, we do have our, it's as our daily essentials pack on. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then the, the fish oil, well, not the fish oil. Factor four, it has fish oil in it. I'm very proud of this product. It's one of a kind. There's nothing else like it on the market. It's four ingredients. So it's fish oil in the form of anchovy. It's sustainably and ethically sourced uh, anchovy. So each soft gel is 600 milligrams of EPA and DHA. Those are the two critical, those are the two um, important omega-3 fatty acids. Those are the ones you really want to focus on when you're reading a label. And uh, we also have curcumin, so great anti-inflammatory. Uh, and then you have coenzyme Q10 and Co10 in the form of ubiquinol, which we know is involved in cellular health for sure. It's involved, it's certainly involved in the powerhouse, the mitochondria and the energy production uh, cycle. So. Uh, and that's super obviously very important when you're talking about the high energy demand center of the brain. Um, and then uh, what was the last one? Uh, garlic, we have garlic, which also helps with blood pressure and it's an antioxidant. Uh, so knowing that heart disease and inflammation are the root cause of many diseases, um, which leads to brain disease, neuro neurodegenerative diseases. I think it's really important that we pay a lot of attention to the foundational health aspects and preventing not in preventing not only like unhealthy weight and, and obesity, but of course then diabetes, heart, high blood pressure, and um, and you know uh, also cholesterol. Yeah, the cholesterol. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so glad you're here today. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the foundation pack, the factor fourth to be there. It's not there now. It's actually currently still on back order, which is a huge bummer for us, but should not happen again. We'll have that back in the end of this month. So soon. end of soon, end of May. Soon, soon, soon. Two or three more weeks, and then moving on, we have. 
of a concept. We wanted to focus on nutrient load, nutrient density. So the organic super reds and the organic super greens, both of these products are very rich in phytonutrients, which are just really powerful antioxidants. It helps the body fight off that excess inflammation and those free radicals, which we know are involved in cellular damage. So when we're talking about neurodegenerative disease, you want to protect those cells. You're trying to protect every single cell. You're trying to encourage the body to make more cells. But as we age, we know it can be more and more difficult. So definitely. Yeah. And it's yeah. it was said that the flavonoids, which is like the chemical compounds that make the colors of the fruit and vegetables, those yeah. can block the plaque buildup. The phytonutrients, the yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. just so easy to just mix one scoop daily. And not to mention you want to increase blood flow. These are loaded with dietary nitrates. So you're trying to increase, increase perfusion. So that means increasing the blood flow and the delivery of nutrients to important tissues like the brain, right? Like mm -hmm. the organs that, that power the body. So um, blood flow is important. That's what this is, this is involved with. And then uh, of course the organic coffee. One thing I wanted to make note is that there's a buzzword called nootropic. It has to do with supplements that are designed to increase cognition and brain health. None of them have been proven to do much. Now, I'm not saying the ingredients that people use in nootropics aren't beneficial. They, they probably are. And there's a lot of different now products that can do a search for nootropics. But man, are they expensive. I would not recommend them at this time. We are evaluating a number of different ingredients for nootropics, but we just haven't been able to get there on the, the, the clinical evidence and, and the cost. Um, and then so that's one the reason why I say that is because caffeine is kind of considered one of those, you know. And so the, the, or, the Live Good Organic Coffee um, is organic, and it also had you know, obviously 100 milligrams of caffeine per serving, but we enhanced the coffee with uh, six adaptogenic mushrooms. I have also seen, I think, was it one of the mushrooms? I think it was probably reishi, um, the gamma mushrooms that have been in, involved in nootropics. Some company has, has them out there for those as well. So the mushrooms are being touted as, as a nootropic. We didn't necessarily go that route here. We went for more of the adaptogenic response. I mean, they're so heavily, they've been used for so, so many years. There's so many known benefits with mushrooms, um, but definitely reducing stress is a big part of what we want to help people achieve because it can have a negative, obviously, um, uh, negative effect on, on mental health. Right, and I mean, the, the mushrooms definitely help, uh, you know, protect the brain, especially sure. your lion's mane, your reishi, and your chaga, yep. which are three of the, of the six in here. Yeah, and you also have maca. Maca, maca, yeah, maca's yep. in there as well, which has been shown. Improves to cognitive function. Yep. yep. Slows down age-related cognitive disease. Just yeah. good stuff. All awesome. good stuff, guys. Awesome, yeah. So I don't know that this is, is this one pack or another no. pack? No. no. Yep, so this is just highlighting a number of different different supplements and ingredients and things that could be shown to be beneficial um, from a foundational health perspective. Yeah, so think about brain health, guys. You've got to yep. take care of it. got to take care of your body to help take care of your brain. got to do it. Yes, you do. And yes, I know you had some fun little, just like tips and tricks. Uh, I do, but before I do, why don't we, let me try and see if I can questions. pull up some few questions here. Sorry guys, I'm tapping the phone. It's like, um, yeah, the, the question about not knowing if you get enough magnesium, assume you're not, if you have to ask, you're, you're, you're probably not. Blood work, blood tests, the, the magnesium tests are not that easy and definitive, not as easy as a blood test, or I'm sorry, not as easy as a vitamin D test because most of your magnesium is deposited into your bones and your muscles and tissues. It's just only a little bit, free floating in the blood to be able to actually uh, measure. Uh, but they do have tests for magnesium. They're just uh, a little bit more challenging. And there's really no sense. There's really, I mean, I'm not suggesting you take an overdose of magnesium, but it, you should definitely be supplementing with it. Yeah. We should all consider ourselves, we're deficient in it. Remember, we're not getting what we used to be getting from our diet, unfortunately. Yeah, right. I know. No, it's not too late if you're over 60. Of course not. Nope. Of course not. No, 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 no. Start Starting now is when you need to be really focused on maintaining the, the, the cognition. And I'm going to run down a few of like things to do, things to avoid. Maybe some of them you're probably already doing. Some you can add in. And then, let me tell you, the list is not exhaustive. There are so many lifestyle things that you guys can come up yeah. with on your own. It's never too late, guys. You can always slow things down. Always. Yeah, I think we can talk about that. Um Wow, there's a lot of questions, guys. So I think we're just going to jump into some of the. Yeah, no, I did. I mentioned the Reds. Uh, question is, Red, Reds mentioned sexual health on the bottle is a type of blood flow. It does. Yes, it does. It asked, as a matter of fact, it's, it's based on the uh, same dietary nitrate, same nitrate pathway that they use in certain medications like Viagra for erectile dysfunction, like isosorbide mononitrate for high blood pressure, like nitroglycerin for people that have chest pain. It opens the blood vessels, increases blood flow. 
uh, age to start taking magnesium. Guys, we give this to our kids, not ours specifically. We give them a children's magnesium, but start young. Like our bodies need magnesium. Everything okay for diabetics? I mean, look, you should be monitoring your sugars and watching and seeing what foods do to it, but uh, there's no added sugars in our, in our, in our products. Can you mix the reds and greens and amino protein all together? Yeah, sure, yeah. of course. Yeah, any other questions, guys, um, you know, unrelated to kind of what we're talking about as well or what we're talking about, you can go ahead and email me, Lisa at livegood.com. Yeah. Happy to answer all questions um, anytime. Yeah. Okay, tips and tricks. Yeah, what time is it? How are we doing on time? A little 20 minutes after. So guys, look, there's a few things I was thinking about. I was just writing them down. Now I'm just going to read a few to you. So more of, things that I'd like to see you do more of if you wanted to start incorporating some healthy say brain focused exercise in your life. But grounding is one that came to mind, like a grounding mat. Lisa actually purchased a grounding mattress pad. You go outside and walk barefoot in dirt and soil and ground and, and the earth and that grounding effect that has an ion, there's an exchange of ions that is beneficial for cellular health. That's why people, if you get near a waterfall, apparently there's a lot of dis disinfectant effects of the waterfall and the clashing of the water. That's why we walk the beach a lot. It's just to pick up on that movement of water and exchange of ions. So that groundwork, grounding is important. Breath work is the next one. Pick up an app, find an app. Just There's so many of them. Find one that you like. You can customize breath work. You can do apnea holds. You can do different types of like, you can work on your CO2 tolerance. You can work on your O2 deprivation. Like, there's all these different cool things you can do. Meditative type apps. Lisa, you might have one you want to yeah. throw out there. Um, and this doesn't have to be long. No. It's like, I mean, no, sometimes no, no. me just doing like three minutes of breath work because that's all I have time to do. It's still, I mean, you feel the difference. It's For still sure. beneficial. And if you guys could, Add to this or take away from you. Know, pick one or two things to do on it and try it and see what you think. I want you guys to have some takeaways from these these Zoom calls. Power saying no. A lot of times we get pressured into things and it builds up with stress and anxiety for us. Learn how to say no. But at the same token, I don't want you to say no to things when it increases your socialization and your opportunity to get out there and and expand your horizons. So there's a balance there. But I know a lot of us have a hard time saying no to things. So if it's causing stress and anxiety or dismay in your life, you know, pick up the power and say no. Uh, focus on sleep. We're going to do a sleep thing on its own because sleep uh, hygiene is a topic that we could talk on for a very long time, but focus on sleep. Recognize the importance of sleep. If you're not getting enough, change your habits. Get into, I'll get into to the habit. Uh, sunlight first thing in the morning, letting sunlight hit the retina, building that sunlight. Sunlight first thing in the morning has definitely been... Keep the sunglasses off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Just that, just that just first for a little thing bit. in the morning. You mm -hmm. just need to have that yeah. Uh, immersion in nature, I think, is a huge one. I mean, we all we all have access to beautiful natural areas. Go find them if you're not already. Get involved. Just ride a bike, walk. I don't know. Sit in your car and open the windows in a parking lot somewhere of a nature park. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, just get out there. I mean, just get the air. Just see the scenery. Listen to the birds. I mean, I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh, pets. Own, pet ownership has been shown to be very beneficial. We own pets. Uh, I can't imagine a world without them. Uh, vacationing, of course, you know, can be beneficial. Volunteering. So if you're looking for something to do with your time, I did talk about the, the danger of uh, social isolation and uh, being lonely. Loneliness has a 30% greater uh, uh, chance of early death, yeah. something like that, because Crazy. you're being lonely. Um, writing letters. How about this? Changing your route to work. Um, I don't commute anywhere right now, but I used to, and I know I did change my route to work and it helps a lot. It's crazy what it can do. So if you've got a normal route each day to a place, try going a different direction, try doing a different Just route. Just go through like a little routine. Yes, yeah. switch, sure. Switch, switch your routine. routine. Make your Absolutely. Nog and think a little differently. Make your brain think a little different. Set some goals, right? Uh, sauna and ice bath. There's a lot of buzz about that. I love both of those. Brain games, Sudoku, uh, board games, you know, different different mind challenging brain games are all good. And I read too that you got to switch up those games. So say like you only play Sudoku, like your your brain gets accustomed to that one, and it doesn't have to work as hard. So switch up those brain games. Yeah, and then also challenge yourself to remember people's phone numbers, addresses. If you're so used to getting in the car and turning the GPS on, try not to do that. Go. Go at it on your own a little bit. Just try to go back to dial a phone number instead phone of number. looking up yeah. the name. And then a couple of things, here are a few things that like to avoid or to minimize or to take, take some out of your life is the news cycle. So get off the same news network doing it every single day at the same time. Change that out. You don't, that, that's, that's not a beneficial thing either. Alcohol, of course, we can't say abstain from it for us. We would love to, but um, we enjoy small amounts of alcohol very infrequently, but um, we'd, 
we still would say it's it's moderation. Moderation. Yes. In moderation. Obviously, avoid smoking. We don't like smoking. Um, cooking with with foods. Pick, pick your oils responsibly. I, I, we don't like seed oils. Uh, watch inflammatory. Ban completely. Ban fried food from your life. She did talk about processed refined food. No added sugars either. Why would you need added sugars? You shouldn't need them. You don't want them. Take them out. Uh, toxic people. Take those people out of your life too. It may take some time, but work on getting the toxic people and toxic relationships out of your life. Pesticides. So there's still two pesticides. There's one pesticide that's still being used in the United States uh, that's now known to have a significant correlation with neurodegenerative disease. Um, and that's, you know, mostly now we're seeing it in the Midwest. So it's an agricultural pesticide, but nonetheless, it is there. Uh, reduce your, ex your exposure to pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Purchase uh, organic. Yeah. And you can, please. In industrial exposures. Um, so depending on what type of job you have, you may need to consider your exposures, uh, those types of things, because they all can accumulate. And that's what we want to be careful about. So, yep. All right. Those are a few fun ones. Like I said, it's not an exhaustive list, but. Uh, some pearls in there, hopefully you guys can use. Yeah, you guys can make a difference in your brain health and share with your loved ones. Yeah, yeah absolutely do that. Absolutely do that. And uh, I think that's all we have for today. What do you think, Lisa? Yeah, anything great. else to add? Nope, again, any emails, I mean, any questions, please email me and I'll get back to you. All right, guys, have a great productive rest of your Monday. Thanks for tuning in. Bye guys. Bye.